bee lions are some of the most successful predators of the modern day, but how would they fare in the past? How well would they survive or possibly thrive in the Cretaceous period? Now, the Cretaceous period is a large portion of time, and we cannot go over how well felines would go across the entire planet throughout the entire Cretaceous period in a single video. Instead, we'll be dropping populations of four species of felines across what is now known as the Hell's Creek Formation in North America during the late Cretaceous period. Just before we get started, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Madly Mesozoic and the Vividon who have really pioneered this topic. Anyways though, without further ado, let us get into this video. Video. Immediately, I'm sure you'll thought about what contestants we have in this prehistoric ecosystems. Well, let's outline the four species of feline that we have. The first and smallest being a coalition of three cheetahs. Now, yes, technically cheetahs are not considered big cats, but they're big and they're cats. So I digress. Cheetahs reach an average size of 1.4 meters in length, 0.8 meters at the shoulder, and weigh in about 50 kilograms. They are capable of reaching speeds of over 104 kilometers an hour, which is facilitated through a lightweight frame, long limbs, and large nasal passage to increase oxygen intake. This is all aided with their biforce of 500 psi to help them take down prey. Now we introduce the African leopard, one of the most interesting, if not the most interesting, big cats on the planet. This cat measures in at around 1.6 meters in length and can stand at around 0.6 meters at the shoulder. Weighing in at an average of 60 kilograms, these agile predators can reach around 60 kilometers an hour in terms of speed. They are equipped with powerful limbs which they use for combat, and they have a bite force of around 310 psi, which I know, on paper that doesn't sound too strong. But that's okay because they get around this as when they take down larger prey, they suffocate it. Now we have the king of the jungle, the African lion. For this scenario, we'll be using a pride of 15. Three males, seven females, and five juveniles. Males average a length of 2.7 meters, a shoulder height of 1.2 meters, and a weight of 180 kilograms. Meanwhile, females are slightly smaller, measuring a length of around 2.4 meters, a shoulder height of 1.1 meters, and a weight of 120 kilograms. The highest recorded speed for a line is around 74 kilometers an hour, with a bite force of approximately 925 psi. Finally, we have one of the largest felines of today, being the Bengal tiger. This big cat measures three meters in length, a shoulder height of 1.1 meters, with certain locations even having them attaining an average weight of 235 kilograms. This feline has the strongest bite force of its modern family, being measured at 1050 psi. So it's important for us to establish the type of environments that our big cats are used to in comparison to what they'll have to deal with. Well, cheetahs, leopards, and lions are quite tolerant to a number of environments. This includes but is not limited to savannas, shrublands, grasslands, and forests. The temperature of these environments change depending on the time and location. However, particularly hot days can exceed 50 degrees Celsius, which are, yeah, Please throw them some sunscreen. Meanwhile, Bengal tigers are better adapted to temperate regions, thriving in tropical forests, mangrove swamps, and grasslands. The environment that they typically inhabit experiences temperatures ranging from 17 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, as for the dinosaur field environment that they'll have to survive in, professionals suggest that the Hell's Creek formation during the Cretaceous period was a flat forested floodplain with a subtropical climate. The landscape featured a mix of dense forests, open woodlands, and meandering rivers and streams. The temperature of this time period was generally quite warm, averaging around 35 degrees Celsius. This warm lush environment supported a wide variety of plant life and animal life, including the numerous carnivorous and herbivorous dinosaurs that we know and love. So we've got this all established, how will our felines do? As if they can't make it past the environment, then how do they have a chance at anything else? Cheetahs, which are adapted for open savannas and grasslands, would struggle significantly in the dense forested floodplains of this environment. Their primary survival trait, exceptional speed, would be less useful in such an environment where visibility is limited and many obstacles are around, making survival challenging. Then we have the leopard, which is capable of surviving and thriving in a variety of environments. These floodplains may be an initial struggle, especially in the more swampy and wet regions. However, their climbing skills would greatly assist in their navigation, and they would definitely get used to the environment quickly. While lions are also from the same habitat, I would say that they're more versatile and robust compared to cheetahs. Although the dense forests would still pose a bit of a challenge for our lions, their overall strength and endurance would help them adapt better than the cheetahs, and the temperature range of Hell's Creek is well within the tolerance of lions. But let us just be honest. Simply put, the Bengal tiger would fare best amongst the rest of the cats. Bengal tigers are already highly accustomed to the forest and swamp environments, which would be similar to that of the subtropical floodplains of the Cretaceous. Their skills in both climbing and swimming would be advantageous in navigating and hunting in this environment. The temperature of this environment is still at the level that the Bengal tiger is capable of tolerating and hence making them the best suited cat of the others. Ultimately, this leads to a score of 5 out of 10 for the cheetahs, 7 out of 10 for the leopards, 6 out of 10 for the lions, and 8 out of 10 for the tigers. However, 
However, in an environment containing so many different unique organisms, what would these felines be inclined to hunt? Cheetahs being the smallest and well most fragile out of the bunch would be particularly careful when choosing prey. They typically hunt small to medium sized game like impalas, gazelles, ostriches and hares. The largest prey a modern cheetah has been recorded to take down is a great kudu which can weigh 360 kilograms although events like this is exceedingly and I mean exceedingly rare. In this new ecosystem the cheetah's diet would mainly consist of small mammals like the didelphodon, a marsupial similar to the modern opossums. Then there's also the ornithomimids which are often referred to as ostrich dinosaurs. They resemble modern day ostriches and what do cheetahs hunt? That is right, ostriches. Unfortunately for the cheetahs, it would be significantly more dangerous to hunt these large ornithomimids as they can weigh upwards of 170 kilograms. On the other hand, African leopards are stealthy assassins, which would find the most success in using the trees to surprise its prey. They typically hunt prey such as antelope, warthogs, ostriches, but they are even able to take down young zebras, wildebeest, gorillas, and even on occasion have taken down adult kudus and elands. Bear in mind that elands can weigh over 400 kilograms. So like the cheetahs, taking down such prey options is exceedingly rare, though it is still important to mention they have the capacity to do so. Taking this all into account, they could take down the same mammals and ornithomimids as the cheetah. However, I think they could even be so bold to take down juvenile admontosauruses, though that is of course if they are able to bring them back up into the tree quick enough. We also can't forget about Spheophilus, which is a small pachycephalosaur which is about half the size of the leopard. This would make it a good and easy meal for them. Additionally, juvenile tyrannosaurs and small dromaeosaurs would also make an important snack that would also eliminate competition. Now we move on to the lions, and let's just say that their social structure really carries them here. It would greatly assist them in taking down larger prey through cooperative hunting, giving them major advantages. In the modern day Africa savannah, this would include warthogs, gazelles, kudus, zebras, elands, giraffes, cape buffalo, and there's even been attempts and takedowns of young and unhealthy African elephants and rhinos. With this, they would have a large variety of prey on their menu. This would include the smaller ceratopsian leptoceratops, which weighs in at only around 100 kilograms. Though still dangerous, being smaller than an individual lion would make it an easy meal for a pride. More difficult prey would include Pachycephalosaurus, which were known for their thick domed skulls. They weigh in at around 400 kilograms, and if a lion miscalculates their hunt on this herbivore, he would be undoubtedly looking at a lion with a few broken bones at best. I think we can all agree that young Edmontosaurs would be the limit for these lions. It would probably have to be around the one ton limit, you might be able to argue for more since they have attempted to take down elephants, but it would pretty much depend if the Edmontosaurus is alone and if it's healthy or unhealthy. Aside from Tyrannosaurs, no other species would likely challenge a large pride of lions over a carcass, giving them a significant advantage in terms of scavenging. Then we have the Bengal tiger, which I would have to argue has the most diverse diet. This includes hares, deers, sloth bears, and mugger crocodiles, and gar. There have even been rare reports of tigers attempting to take down rhinos and elephants alone, sometimes resulting in fatal injuries for both. In Hell's Creek, tigers would pretty much target anything that's game. This includes everything else mentioned for the big cats, with their limits being the same as the lions being a one ton young Edmontosaur. Though it is important to remember that tigers are effective at swimming and even hunting in the water. Freshwater fish and crocodilomorphs such as Borealisuchus, which could even grow up to 4 meters, would still be targeted. Tigers would ambush these crocodiles when they either venture too far out of the water, or if they were in a highly shallow part of the water. This would make an easy meal that wouldn't be quite as contested as the herbivorous dinosaurs or the mammals. Overall though, while some modern big cats, particularly lions tigers have the capacity to take down larger herbivores, they would undoubtedly avoid the largest adult dinosaurs in the Hell's Creek. Herbivores such as Triceratops, Taurosaurus, Edmontosaurus, and Ankylosaurus would be impossible to hunt, especially given their size and likely their natural aggression due to the need to protect their offspring from predators such as Tyrannosaurus rex. So let's now go over these scores for hunting. Cheetahs get a 6 out of 10, leopards get a 7 out of 10, lions get an 8 out of 10, and tigers get an 8 out of 10. But of course, with prey comes competition. So how will these felines deal with all these new threats? We have to remember that in the African savanna, cheetahs, leopards, and lions coexist with numerous predators and scavengers. Their main competitors is easily the hyena, which is known for their powerful bite that can break through bone as well as their large clans, which can number over 70 members. These opportunistic predators will often steal prey from these felines. Other significant threats, of course, comes from the African wild dogs, which hunt in highly coordinated packs. And we also can't forget about the largest predator 
predator in the waterways being the Nile crocodile. Obviously, these cats also compete against each other, often resulting in them taking out each other's young, with lions being able to take down the other two with low difficulty by themselves. Then we move on to Bengal tigers, and despite them being the apex predator of their region, they still face competition from several species. This includes the Asiatic black bear, Indian wolf, mugger crocodile, and saltwater crocodile. All of these are very dangerous foes, however, more often than not, tigers pretty much dispatch them quite easily, with the only big issue being the saltwater crocodile. But there are a number of foes to face during the Cretaceous period, so let's see how our big cats do. We'll first start off with the small line of competitors, including the smaller raptorans and pterosaurs. This includes for the raptor raptors, Parinochion, Archiraptor, and Richard Ostasia. And for the pterosaurs, we have an indeterminate Quetzalcoatlus. Due to how fragmentary some of these remains are, it's hard to say the exact size, but it seems for the raptors, the closest they would approach would be the size of a cheetah. And as for the Quetzal, well, it's hard to say, as two species known either weigh 70 kilograms or over 200 kilograms. But whatever way we look at it, I don't even think that the smaller raptors would even think about messing with them, and the larger Quetzal might. Might is a key word though, because hey, despite being large, they're quite fragile, and at most I could see them trying to intimidate our big cats off of prey, but that'd be about it. Now let us get on to the medium-sized predators, the first of which being Dakota Raptor. This dromaeosaurid measured around 5.5 meters in length, stood around 1.8 meters in height, and weighed in at around 220 to 350 kilograms. This puts it in a slightly higher weight class than our big cats, and hence there would be significant overlap in their food sources leading to intense competition. Then we have the other, and depending Depending on what you believe, we can either call it Nanotyrannus or just a young stage in the Tyrannosaurus Rex's growth. Regardless, estimates would place it at around 6 meters in length and a weight of around 500 to 1000 kilograms. Which, uh, yeah, that utterly dwarfs the felines. So, yeah, look, I won't lie, when it comes to cheetahs, they are getting absolutely cooked. Currently in their ecosystem, they are already at the bottom of the ladder when it comes to being a larger predator. When you put it up against a Dakota Raptor or a Tyrannosaur many times its own size, which is built more robustly and has greater weaponry, well then yeah. I don't really care if you have three cheetahs in your coalition, they will not put up much of a fight and would rather run. But that's when we go into the other issue, and that's being that cheetahs lack stamina, only being able to run at full speed for a short burst before needing to rest, meaning that competitors could catch up with them, and if they deem them a big enough threat or a decent enough food source, well then they'll be taken out. However, leopards I think would be the most interesting and do best in this area due to their ability to effectively climb. Though undoubtedly when it comes to combat, a Dakota Raptor or Tyrannosaurus would put any leopard in an early grave, we have to remember that these are real animals, and no leopard would just go out and fight large predators unless they were forced to. More often than not, as soon as they would see these large predators from the ground, they would zip up to the tree for safety and then just avoid all sorts of conflict. They would be able to just relax, store their food, and just live life to the fullest. The only other climate you would need to worry about would be the larger Bengal tiger, but even then, leopards are much lighter weight and hence can go up to more fragile areas of a tree. And then we have the lions, being more robust and social predators. This would allow them to fare much better against competitors during this time period. I think their biggest opponent would have to be the Dakota Raptor, which is the weaponry and size required to take down any lion one-on-one, -on -one, possibly even a two-on-one. -on -one. However, the fact that lions can live in such large prides would instantly give them the numbers they require to compete on an equal or even greater footing than our large raptor. This would give them the power to overtake carcasses from Dakota Raptor and even bully them off prime hunting grounds. However, the Nano Tyrannosaur Young Tyrannosaur would definitely pose quite an issue due to its significantly larger size. If it did want to contest the lions over food and territory, it could certainly do so. But again, the numbers of the lions as well as the ability to roar could give them the intimidation factor required to scare them off. Last but not least, we have the Bengal Tigers, and I believe that they would have hot competition with the Dakota Raptor, as both would be solitary hunters that aren't too much different in size. With this matchup, I believe it would come down to whoever gets the first attack. But if we're going to say that they're contesting a carcass and both are ready to fight, well the Dakota Raptor is just too large and too strong for the tiger to come out on top. Young Tyrannosaurs would be the biggest threat, as they have the speed and agility to pose a problem for this big cat, as well as being large enough for the big cat not to be able to do much if anything at all to it. Against this predator, it would be required to either climb as high as it could or reach the water as quick as possible. But now we have the largest predator, being an adult Tyrannosaurus Rex. And we already know that this was the largest megatherapod to have walked the planet. It measured 12 meters in length, 4 meters in height at the hips, and weighed in at around 8.8 .8 tons. Now we already know that this dinosaur was equipped with the strongest jaws, was highly intelligent, had developed sensors, and had a great capability for movement. This easily made it the top predator of North America during its time. And to be honest, I think our felines do quite well here. This is mainly due to their small size. I mean, let's think about it. Cheetahs would likely be alright due to the fact that they weigh around 0.6% of the T-Rex's total weight. 
Leopards would also be chilling due to their similar size to the cheetah, as well as their ability to find refuge in trees with their minimum dietary overlap. I will say for lions though, that there is definitely a bit more trouble, as they aren't as small as the cheetah or leopard, and aren't as smooth climbers as the leopard or tiger. Instead, they would have to rely on their numbers to watch out for T-Rexes in the area, and I would still be lying if a Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't pick off a lion or two throughout their time in the Cretaceous. Bengal tigers would be in a similar boat to lions, however they wouldn't have a group to watch out for them. Instead, they would always have to be on high alert, and this could make a life for Tony a fair bit more difficult, but given that they can still climb and swim quite quickly in addition to a high stamina pool, I still think that they'd be quite alright. But if you're wondering could a pride of lions or maybe a group of tigers or anything try to take down a T-Rex, I'm just going to give you a spoiler alert. Yeah, they, they, they don't stand a chance. They do not stand a single chance. The Tyrannosaurus Rex just weighs too much and would destroy any big cat that thought it was a smart idea to try and fight it. So as for the final set of scores for competition, cheetahs get a 4.5 out of 10, leopards get an 8 out of 10, lions get a 7.5 out of 10, and tigers get a 6.5 out of 10. So with all these scores, let's average them out and see how they do. In last place, we have the cheetah at 4.7 out of 10. In third place, we have the lion at 7.2 out of 10. And tied together being the top two is the African Leopard and Bengal Tiger ranking a score of 7.5 out of 10. This gives an overall score of 7 out of 10, which I'd argue would technically be higher due to the cheetah being a really big anchor into this. I mean, let's be honest, it's not going to do too well. This is just so long as they avoid Dakota Raptor in single conflicts, as well as young and adult Tyrannosaurs. And if you ask my personal opinion, I do think that the African Leopard would do best in this scenario. It's small and quick enough to be able to avoid the larger predators, yet it's capable of taking down prey much larger than itself and bring it up into a tree for safe storage. Based on this analysis, I'm fairly confident that these felines would not only just survive, but thrive within North America during the late Cretaceous period. But we're not done yet. In a situation where felines survive for millions of years in the Cretaceous, they would surely have to evolve to acclimate to their new ecosystem. So what would that look like? Well, in order for cheetahs to have a chance of surviving during this period, I think that they would need to undergo several physical changes. The primary adaptation that I could imagine would be a reduction in their reliance of speed as it would be less effective in a dense floodplain area. This would result in a smaller species known as Acononyx microus. These cheetahs would undergo convergent evolution adapting to be alike to a serval. Their average size would now reach around 15 kilograms, which would mean that they would solely have their diet consisting of smaller mammals, reptiles, and young dinosaurs. This assists in hiding from larger predators as well as reducing competition over food with them. This mitigated size does make them more vulnerable to attacks from pterosaurs and smaller dromaeosaurids. As for the leopards, well, I think that they're solid in their overall structure, but as with any animals, improvements can be made. This new this species is called Panthera Paradis Heracles. Due to the average size of their prey increasing, as will the leopards, it would now average 90 kilograms in weight with larger individuals exceeding 130 kilograms. These felines would solely focus on tackling prey from the treetops, often waiting on thick trees around water sources for their preferred prey, being ornithomimids. However, I think the biggest change is going to be their relationship with the lions, but we'll get onto that next. As for the lions, well, over time their coat color would change from a yellow gold to a darker mottled coat. This would assist them in camouflaging in the lush green floodplains. Different prides of lions would also be better adapted to taking down different prey options, with some reducing to around 130 kilograms in weight to focus on taking down the faster ornithomimids. Meanwhile, the heavy lion prides would reach around 230 kilograms on average, and their diet would mainly consist of pachycephalosaurs, young hadrosaurs, and ceratopsians. And this new species of lion would be known as Panthera leonemius. The relationship between leopards and lions would be an excellent example of mutualism. Leopards would now develop a system of vocalizations and visual signals to alert lions to the presence of the larger predators such as Tyrannosaurus rex, Dakota raptors, or for the later tigers. These calls would echo around the territory, serving as an early warning for lions to allow themselves to confront or avoid these threats. In return, lions would somewhat tolerate the presence of leopards, allowing our spotted friends to scavenge off their remains and even drive competition such as Dakota raptors and tigers out of the territory. It would be a win-win for both of them. And at last, we have the tigers, and let us say that they've been eating good in this ecosystem, with this new species being known as Panthera tigris titanus. This would be a powerhouse of powerhouses, averaging 380 kilograms, with some individuals passing 410. These tigers would work in pairs, taking down large prey such as the Montosaurs approaching the two-ton mark, Pachycephalosaurus, and even on occasion attempting to hunt down the three-ton Denvisaurus. They would even be capable of scaring off small prides of 
with lions, young tyrannosaurs, and Dakota raptors out of their territory. There'd be heated competition between these tigers and the larger lion prides, with both trying to take out their offspring as much as possible. But the tigers have the ability to take down the larger crocodilomorphs, fish, and turtles that inhabit the waterways, giving them a unique advantage when it comes to their diet. And it's the same with their ancestors, all these big cats would avoid the Tyrannosaurus rex. Sure, their size may have increased, but it certainly isn't enough to take down an 8.8 ton threat. So yeah, those are just some of the possible lines of evolution that these cats may undergo as they try to survive the Cretaceous period. But of course, this video doesn't cover the entirety of the feline family, but we have still examined a good variety. Anyways though, that's the end of the video, and as always, if you did enjoy, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below if you want to see more content like this, and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.